in the previous video uh, we were just uh, having a look at the what is a machine language and then high level language and all now the how the higher level language english like words are getting converted to binary language of different microprocessor so that's what we are going to see here the answer is through another program called compiler or interpreter so whatever program you enter whether c or c++ or python you will be entering in a, those codes in an interface which is nothing but we can't call it a compiler or interpreter so they will convert them into another program so that's called uh, object code okay so these programs this compiler interpreter will accept high level language as their input that's that we call it as a source code then translate the source code into machine language for respective microprocessor and this translation is called the object code and uh, so this is how we will be we are able to write the high using the high level language will be able to work in any platform mainly uh, any uh, that is even in any OS also nowadays we can work so let us come to the uh, i'm going to give you only a broad overview of what are all the things that will be in a uh, cpu so cpu can be mainly broadly divided into the following groups blocks groups of blocks register array alu and logical group instruction decoder machine cycle encoder timing and control circuitry interrupt control groups and serial io control group now in when i say register array mostly that is i am talking about the very basic microprocessor intel 8085 okay i am talking about that only uh, other than this also it's there for other microprocessor there may be more registers or less registers but nowadays it has uh, more registers this is very basics when the microprocessor is evolved evolved how the microprocessor looks and what are all the basic things that that is what i am taking it is for easy understanding but the uh, almost the structure is same but more number of registers more number of control circuits are there now so a register array here it consists of some 14 registers and in 14 registers 12 in this 12 registers or 8 bit registers and two registers or 16 bit registers because they are addressing the memory a memory address consists of 16 bit address again i am talking about 80 85 only nowadays the address is very vast okay it, it that itself is 2 power 128 or 2 power 256 but here i am talking about 2 power 4 which is nothing but 16 bit registers so they are again classified into general purpose registers special purpose temporary and uh, pointer registers or memory address registers so general purpose registers, there are six b c d e h l and special purpose registers are accumulator instruction registers and flag registers then temporary registers are w z and then pointer is a program counter and a stack pointer now uh so uh, whatever i have said in the last video uh, that is lost power powerpoint that's what i have explained here here bcd hl or 8 bit registers and when you combine these two bc because this is already 8 bit this is 8 bit b and c can be combined and can form a 16 bit registers and can be used to for uh operations which involves 16 bit operations okay and then accumulator it is an 8 bit register intermediate result you will be storing in the accumulator then instruction register this is uh, once the data is instruction is fetched from memory it will be loaded into instruction register where it will be decoded what is decoding understanding the instruction what is said in the instruction and then doing the operation as said it is not programmable the programmers will not access we don't have the access to this instruction register it is accessed internally by the microprocessor then comes the flag registers here 8 bit registers uh, this is again a flag register 8 bit register but within that only 5 bits are used for as flag bits so what are they they are sign bit zero bit auxiliary carry parity bit and c is carry carry bit so carry bit is as a d0th bit 
and D2 is a parity bit, AC is auxiliary carry, D4 is for auxiliary carry, D6 is for zero bit, and D7 is sine bit. So what is the meaning of this? When an addition operation, say for example, when you are adding these two value, two eight bits, when there is a carry from the eighth bit, okay? So in that case, the carry bit will be set. So when there is a carry out, then this will be set to one, else it will be zero. Then P, parity bit. So for example, when the result of the operation is, uh, suppose our microprocessor adopts odd parity, imagine in that case, you check the number of bits, one, 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 one. Here, if you see that there are four ones, since our microprocessor adopts odd parity, here, even number of ones are there. So automatically, the parity bit becomes one in order to make this as a odd number, odd number of ones. So if it is uh, even parity, uh, if it is already an odd number, say, for example, OK, all these are even numbers only. In this case, P will be equal to one if it is an odd parity. Suppose we are adapting an even parity means it is already even numbers, four, four ones are there. So this will be equal to zero. Then axillary carry. Axillary carry is nothing but when there is an uh, overflow occurs after in the fourth bit. Zero, one, two, three. It is, if you say one, two, three, it is fourth bit. Or else zero, one, two, three means third. Okay, if you say start from zero. So when there is an overflow occurs here, see here, one, one, zero, and one occurs. So now this axillary carry will be set to one. Then zero bit. Zero bit is it will be if the result of the any operation is all or zero, then zero bit will be set to one, else it will be zero. Then sign bit, sign bit will be either a zero, uh, it is a zero or one because uh, sign bit, uh, if it is a uh, one, then it means it is negative. It is representing negative value. If it is equal to zero, then it is representing a positive value. So what is a sign bit? We'll see. Okay, now you know that uh, two, two power eight is 256, is it? So this 256, uh, 256 combinations you can represent, which means zero, 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 okay? And so on till all ones. This is that, so, if you take in between, there are 256. From this to this 256, different combinations you can represent, different numbers you can represent. But this is with the unsigned number. Suppose I want to represent sign bit in this. How I can do? I can take this last bit. Okay. So if it is equal to 1, then it means it is a what we have seen now. If it is equal to 1, D7 bit, it is a negative number. If it is 1, if it is neg mm, 0, then you can say it is a positive number. That means, so when you say, when you talk about the sign bit, here unsigned numbers you can represent. So from 0 to 256, you can represent. Suppose sign bit, si I want to include sign bit also, whether a num given number is a positive or negative, then this is restricted divided by 2, which is 128, which means 0 to 127, then from here, minus 1, let us say, uh, this is 128, 0 to 128, minus 1 to 127. So if you take together, Minus 1 to 127 plus 0, you can take 128. So from here to this 128. So put together 256. So this much number you can represent, which is nothing but 2 power 7. So using 7 bits, this 7 bits alone, you can represent 0 to 128 and minus 1 to 127. So for example, if I want to represent uh, 2, number 2 as positive, now, this is a positive 2. Suppose I want to represent a negative 2. How I can represent? By making the D7. D7 means the last bit. 
because here it starts from D0, D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7. So here I can make it as 1, and then 0, 0, 1, 0. So now this is called a negative number. Okay, so the same, uh, that is a 256, uh, in this 128 numbers can be used for representing the positive number and the remaining 128 can be used for negative number. Zero is the, zero also will be included. So put together, so minus one to 127 plus zero. So put together, you have 256 numbers, the same eight bits, but the last bit is used, since the last bit is used for sign bit representation, you have for data representation, only seven bits. So if you say, that is how this value arrives. Next comes the temporary register. W is the, these are all the temporary data registers. They store, and other than that, another one temporary data register is also there. They are 8 bit registers and they are used to hold in between uh, data. That is the result of the intermediate data they will be holding. Then comes the stack pointer and program counter. Stack pointer. Already we have seen it points to the memory address. So that is why the stack point of even program counter is also pointing to the memory address. They, since the memory address is 16 bit, these two are 16 bit registers. You cannot use them as 8 bit, 8 bit. Okay, just like how we did B, C, D, H, L, B. I said B and C can be combined together and make it as a 16 bit register. So there it can be used as 8-bit register as well as a, when you combine two, you can use it as a 16-bit. But here it is not so. When you say stack pointed, it is a 16-bit. Strictly, it is a 16-bit register as well as program counter. Now, what is the, already we have seen the purpose of stack pointer, but we'll see why the program counter is used. So let us take this as a memory, okay? And we start from, uh, let us imagine we, we have the address zero and so on. Now we are storing some program. Let us consider some program for finding the factorial of a number. So you start from, let us consider the C, C, uh, C++. Now, the first line may be hash include, okay? stdao.h, then open bracket, then you declare, uh, or before this void main and then open bracket and so on. Then the uh, instruction uh, respective of the factorial number, then finally you close the parenthesis. Let us consider you are storing it line by line. And it is like, uh, it can be a consecutive line or it, it will be stored somewhere, but time being we consider as a consecutive line. Now, what is the purpose of the program counter? Initially, the program counter, the program counter will consist of the starting address of a program, okay? Now here the starting address, let us take it as zero. Okay, now the instruction register uh, the, uh, will, will, uh, will be fed with the data which is present in the this address. So the CPU will read the data from the memory address, how it will read the memory from, how it will read the data, because it must be said from which memory it has to be read. Okay, there are many memory lines, many memory, um, there is so many uh, lines on that. So which line it has to read? That will be, that address is given in the program counter. Now, let us say it is zero. Now the data placed here will be read and placed in the, uh, from the, it will be placed in the uh, data register, which in turn will go to the instruction register, where the instruction register will read, uh, will uh, decode it and it understand and will execute. 
So when it is doing that, the program counter will get automatically incremented to the next line. Now, so now the program counter is pointing to the next line. So once the execution of that line, the first line is over. Now the second line will be taken. So how it fetches the second line by seeing the program counter? Because now the program counter is pointing to the next line. Now this data is read, and again it is placed in IR for decoding. By that time, the program counter is incremented to one. Now it is pointing to the second. So this is how the sequential execution of a program is maintained. Okay. And this is a 16 bit. Why? Because the address is a 16 bit address. Now, if you see, 16 bit can be represented like this 0, 0, 1, 0, like this. Okay. So, 2 power 16 totally. So, that much uh, address lines are there. So, when uh, a particular line is being executed, the program counter value will be incremented to the next line. It is automatically incremented. There is no explicit things are needed. So, instruction decoder and machine cycle encoder. Now, it decodes, instruction decoder decodes the opcode stored in the instruction register and establishes the sequence of events to follow. It encodes it and transfers to the timing and control end to perform the execution of the instruction. 